Hello there and welcome friends. This is a guide on how to recruit a Rushale, the succubus companion, earlier in the game, so at the end of chapter 2, so that you can still use her during the Dresden siege battle, instead of just getting her at the beginning of chapter 3. This can be beneficial because, well, by having her early she also starts at level 8 instead of level 10, which does make her more customizable, as you do have two more levels to play around when building your Arushale. And even if you respect her, she will be at level 8 instead of level 10. Anyways, the quest to do this can be somewhat complicated, because it does require you to solve a puzzle in a certain way. By returning to the Lost Chapel map area after you defeat Nukinev, the Nabasu boss for your Mythic Rank 2, and then head to, well, basically an optional area in the Lost Chapel map. I'll cover everything not only about the puzzle, but also about the many side bosses that you have to fight before being able to complete the puzzle, as they can be quite tough, especially for new players. So let's get started. First, head back to the Lost Chapel map area after you defeat Nukinev. We are right here in the actual chapel area with the statue of Ayomedai. So let's head left here. And keep going Jimmy, until we wait. reach this little area. Now simply keep descending Beautiful. the cliff here. Until you reach this part where you have to pass an athletics check to descend even further. So let's do that. Got this one. Let's see what we can do. And then another athletics check. Now be advised that as soon as you I make this check here, end. you will have to face a rather tough encounter with gargoyles. And the gargoyle boss is very powerful. Not so be sure eyes. to pre-buff your characters before this battle. I will lend and once you are ready. Oh, Make right. the check and go down further. <laughs> now notice how, as I said, you immediately have to fight these gargoyles here. But the one that's the most dangerous of them all is the boss that will soon appear. Here it is, the half-fiend gargoyle chieftain. I strongly suggest you have all of your characters focus on him first. Because as his first action he tends to cast the blasphemy spell which can paralyze all of your non-evil characters for a massive amount of time, basically ensuring your characters die. And this is why you should certainly pre-buff with freedom of movement on your most important characters before this battle, as to make them immune to paralyze and hold. Do so let's have everyone back. attack the chieftain and thank these two gargoyles here with our pet, Leopard. Now notice he already went with blasphemy, but because many of our characters are buffed with freedom of movement, it's not going to make much of a difference. He already went down, but he's on the floor, by the way. Now, there's a lot more powerful enemies to fight before we can recruit a Rushale early, so I recommend you come prepared to this part of the map. Spirit. Defeat is not an option. And here we are, the altar of Desna. But we, before we can actually solve this puzzle, we need to find a few items. So let's keep going. But remember, we'll have to return to this part of the map later on after we get the required items. Can't make the demons wait. After moving past the shrine, you'll have to fight more ghouls. But the strongest enemy here, and the one you should be wary of, a is actually this Kabriri cultist is here, enough. because he is a level 9 cleric spellcaster, so try to defeat him first. I'm here Let's just week. charge, have everyone charge at him. The spirits demand your blood! I always think it's amusing that for some reason the ghouls were actually feared. Is that pressure? More ghouls here, and once again, focus on the Kariri Cultist first. So just keep going further past them. Here we go. Here we go again. More gargoyles. Here, I swear it. I can handle it. And just past this gargoyle, so at this section of the map, we'll actually have to face 
and Incubus. This battle can be dangerous because a lot of Succubi and Incubi will also spawn together with this lone Incubus here. So be prepared. We're gonna rest after this fight. Now notice how there's a lot more enemies. After you defeat the Incubus and Succubus, notice you can actually loot this fallen character here and he has the first of the items you need. The small sextant, which is engraved with the symbol of Desna, so let's loot it. Once again, right at this part of the map. Even more succubus and incubus here. Remember, if you're getting Texas. charmed or dominated by the succubus enemies, all you have to do is cast protection from evil communal to make all of your party members immune to dominate and charm. It only lasts for a single minute though, so be advised that you'll have to cast it again, eventually. Hmm. So let's just charge at them out of battle to gain the upper hand. Remember that I also have a guide explaining why aid. charge is so powerful it's and why you should always do it out of battle we'll if you can. One way or the other. Well, just like this. This will be quick. So notice how we are already all charging before battle really started. So we gain a lot of free hits. World in crimson. <laughs> Oh, notice how the stringy demo then actually spawned? This guy can be very powerful in the early game if you're not really prepared. Notice how it's actually a level 20 outsider and we are just level 8 at this point basically. It has very high damage and can easily defeat some of your characters. Thankfully our leopard pet has very high armor class, so we'll probably be able to tank the stringy demo then before it deals much damage. So let's send our leopard ahead first while all our other characters attack him. Unfortunately, we also augured some goose still. Thankfully, our leopard is very fast, so he can easily reach the demo dent. And now let's switch to him with our other characters, as the goose won't really do much damage by themselves. <laughs> Notice how the demo dent has very high armor class at 30, so let's have Camellia use Evil Eye to reduce its armor class to more manageable amounts. Alright, so we did it. Of course, if you were on hard and unfair, then you should certainly pre buff before this battle in particular. Go for their hearts! Our leopard almost fell, we didn't really have protective luck on him. As the stringy demo then caught me by surprise. It's been a while since I've done this area. Thankfully, Stone Skin kept us alive and this is another very powerful buff for this part of the game in particular but later on you can just get the communal version that buffs your whole party with stone skin at once this save is from before I knew how powerful scalds were so I, I still have a normal wrong. bard our attack bonus could be a lot higher had we a scald my skills are absolute if we had a scald some more ghouls here. First served. And now we finally reach a cave right here at this part of the map. And we have to go inside and fight a few enemies to retrieve another item that we're going to use in our Desna Altar Portal. Let's see what. The enemies here are very easy though compared to the stringy demo done we just faced outside. Here we go! Basically just a few gargoyles, but nothing like the gargoyle chief thing we just fought to. Let's just charge Should everyone I? once again. Mm, my will is I resolute. Never wrong. My skills are absolute. So the last one for me. Right in this book here, you can actually loot the Book of Dreams, which can eventually be a very powerful 
item to aid your summoned creatures and it does gain increasing effects based on the longer you have this item and use it basically. We only have the second page effect so far but it will improve later on. So if you want to play a summoner, be sure to keep this item in mind. Now the item we really came here for is a small harp, which you can loot from this chest here in the cavern. So let's grab it. Don't forget to loot the other items, there are some useful ones here, such as the Bruiser's Chain Shirt, and also a bar of cold iron. Now we have to return to the altar of Desna, which is right here in this green little icon, Desna's altar, so let's head there. Now when leaving the cave you might also end up encountering this other demon here, Maugla, which is an Abasu, and it can also be very tough, but not really as strong as the Stringy Demodant. He does have some high armor class, so let's have Camellia already start with Evil Eye, or to reduce it. And everyone else can just attack, as this is a melee focused party. Now the main annoyance of Maugla is that he will drain your levels. He can cast Enervation, and he also has a level drain aura. So this black area surrounding him, so I suggest you deal with him as fast as possible, as to not take a lot of level drain. So his death stealing gaze already drained more levels from our character here. Thankfully he was actually knocked down by our dog, which is amusing because he is a winged demon, but not all of the winged demons are actually immune to trips so far. And there we go, he's down. He does actually drop two items, so the big game gloves, which is one of the best gloves in the game for rangers and also players who have the query ability to inflict the enemy with a minus two penalty to armor class and sicken them for three rounds and this doesn't have a save so can be a very useful piece of gear to debuff the enemy. Besides that, braces of armor plus four, which is useful for a pet so we don't need to cast mage armor on them. Anyways, let's head back to the altar of Desna here at last. Don't use the little hand icon, first you click on the altar to basically as if it was a lootable container. Now it also starts with the map of unknown lands inside, so don't really do anything with it. What you have to do is put both the small harp and also the small sextant that we found. After putting the items inside, you have to click on the little hand icons in the correct feel order, like chosen one. which is middle, right, left, and then middle again. I hear you. Notice you receive a vision from Arushale. I hear your voice, but I don't see you. Where are you? Show yourself. Did she send you? I doubt we've met before. This melody unites us. Desna herself must have brought you here. And she'll tell you to find her in the Dresden dungeon. So whenever you head to the Dresden siege at the end of chapter 2 and talk to Arushale at the prison, you'll be able to recruit her by choosing the Azata Mystic Path option. And no, you don't really have to go Azata afterwards. And it, this doesn't lock you into Azata, it's just a dialogue option. By doing this, you can actually recruit Arushale during the Dresden siege and she will come at level 8 instead of level 10. Otherwise, you will only be able to recruit Arushale at the start of chapter 3 and she will come at level 10 in. Now just as another note, don't forget to loot the altar because you also get the throwing axe of silence here. A very powerful throwing axe for your dual wielding throwing axe characters in chapter 2. And remember, I already have a guide explaining what makes throwing axes so powerful and where you can find all of the best ones. Well, so this was it everyone. I hope this guide was useful to you. After all, it does let you recruit a Rushale earlier, especially right before one of the biggest battles and dungeons in the whole game, which is the Dresden Siege. As usual, if you've enjoyed this video, then please remember to like, subscribe, and even become a member for access to exclusive perks. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.